Hi, Andy Un over at St. John's, and we're going to today talk about RoboKnee, and we're going to try to be as simple as possible to explain RoboKnee and the associated Mako technology behind it. We're going to go over the four main steps on how we use this technology to do a knee replacement. And it really comes down to four steps. One is anatomic placement, alignment, and sizing. The second is computer guided balancing. The third is robotic protection. And then the fourth is a confirmation of accuracy. So we'll take you through these four steps very briefly. There's a lot of numbers. We're not gonna look at the numbers. We're just staying at a very broad view to look at the principles behind this. So we're not really focused on the math today. We're focused more on the concepts. Okay, so before we get into the robo knee and the Mako technology, let's just step back and look at knee arthritis. So this is a typical arthritic knee. Here's the femur, here's the tibia. There's just a lot of disease going on. First, we can see there's a complete loss of joint space between the two bones. Bones are constantly grinding with weight bearing. We can also see what's called a lateral subluxation or a lateral translation. The tibia is no longer centered on the femur. It's off balance and off to the side. And also this leg is no longer straight, it's bow-legged. And so there's a lot of deformity that we wanna correct. And so we're just gonna go through the technology and how we would use it to correct a deformity like this. So the success of knee replacement really comes down to preparation and preoperative planning. So everything starts even before we go to surgery. It starts with a CT scan of the knee from which we are able to make a three-dimensional model. And the CT scan is important for two main reasons. One, it allows us to identify the center of the hip, the center of the knee, and the center of the ankle. So the hip, knee, ankle axis. So this leg is now crooked or bow-legged. Knowing these three points helps us to align the knee so it's mechanically in the neutral alignment. The second major thing that it does is that it allows us to create a three-dimensional model. So we can see what bone is normal, what bone is missing, and what bone is abnormal. And then from there, we can look at position, alignment, and sizing to very precisely place our implants prior to surgery. So we have a very clear plan and a very clear target of what we hope to achieve by the end. So after anatomic alignment and anatomic placement, we then move into computer-guided balancing. And this is also two separate stages. One is ligament balancing and the other one is fine tuning. In ligament balancing, we start with our original deformity. That's the bow leggedness of 12 degrees. And we can see how far off this is neutral. And then we'll apply a gentle tension to the optimal length of the collateral ligaments and the surrounding capsule. And from this, you can see we can already correct eight of the 12 degrees of deformity. So we can correct a lot of the deformity through ligament balancing, and we know quantitatively how much we're correcting. We're gonna, then gonna move on to the next step. From here, we move to what's called fine tuning, where we make small micro adjustments in millimeter and degree to correct the remaining residual deformity. So again, remember we started out with anatomic placement. We can see here at the end of the femur, we have eight millimeters. We have seven millimeters at the tibia. What we'll do is that we'll put a little extra angulation on the femur, a little extra angulation on the tibia. This one plus three is four degrees. That's the four degrees that we wanna correct. So now we know that we're back into a neutral alignment. So we can make small adjustment in degrees. These are very hard to see when you're actually looking at the knee, but they're very easy to dial in by computer. With all of that information dialed in, with the anatomic alignment, with the anatomic sizing and the placement, as well as the correction of the deformity through computer guided balancing, we are then ready to proceed with the knee. And so the key thing that we have on the robot is two things. One is precision. So everything is made to the millimeter. The second important thing is the robotic protection. So we already know the boundaries of the bone from our CT scan. And so what we do is we circumscribe a virtual boundary around the periphery of the bone, beyond which this tool will never be able to cut. 
So it will always protect the soft tissue, the neurovascular structures, the muscles and tendons in these surrounding areas. So there is no chance of any type of injury to these structures. This virtual boundary can see what the eyes cannot always see. And then probably the most important step in the robo knee using this MAKO technology is the ability to confirm the accuracy of our plan and the steps that we've taken. Now, remember, we started out with a huge asymmetry. The medial side was nine, the lateral side was 18. This was completely off to the side. And our target was to have symmetry between the two sides. You can see we have a very, uh, this is a quadrilateral, a very asymmetric extension gap. But using this technology and making the appropriate adjustments to alignment to ligament balance, we now have a very symmetric gap 19 millimeters and 19 millimeters. So it's exactly what we had hoped. We've got a very clear confirmation, not just visually at surgery by eyeballing and by feel, but also quantitatively to the millimeter by looking at numbers and alignment. And then our final check actually occurs outside of surgery. Uh, and it allows us to look very graphically at the correction that we were able to achieve using the robo knee during surgery. And again, remember we started out with this knee with a significant amount of deformity, very unstable with translation of the tibia and a bow leggedness. Now you can see we've been able to correct it just as we plan back to a neutral and stable alignment. So we can see that it's a pretty powerful technology and it's been a major advance over our prior tools. And our prior tools were very good. They were based on rods, measuring blocks and slide rules, and they were very good, but they really don't compare to the amount of precision that we have with robotic instrumentation, as well as the CT scan. It allows us again to do four main things, anatomic balancing and alignment, number two, computer guided balancing, number three, robotic precision and protection, and finally, number four, an intraoperative confirmation of accuracy. We've tried to keep this as simple as possible. We have other videos you're welcome to look to, to look at the very technical details and the math if you're so interested. Otherwise, thank you very much.